Hello everyone. In this video, we are uh, we are going to discuss two algorithms: Warshak's algorithm and uh, Floyd's algorithm uh, in the context of uh, dynamic programming. Warshak's algorithm uh, finds a transitive closure of a diagram, a, a direct diagram. Uh, so here is a diagram, and uh, we have uh, we represent diagram in uh, uh, as an abstract matrix here. And uh, uh, this algorithm uh, transforms this abstract matrix into uh, a, another matrix, which is a transitive closure of the uh, So, in the transitive, <coughs> in the abstract matrix, uh, there is uh, there is a one at i comma j, if and only if there is an edge from i to j. In transitive closure, there is a one at i comma j, if and only if uh, there is a path from i to j. That means i uh, J can be reached from I. So that is based on the transitivity uh, property. Uh, <coughs> so in this case, there is no uh, there is no edge from D to B, but there is a path from D to D to B via A. So that is because there is uh, an edge from D to A and there is an edge from A to B. So similarly, uh, we can uh, say suppose uh, there is no path from A to C. There is no edge from A to C directly. But uh, there is a path from A to uh, D via B, and there is a path from D to C. Therefore, uh, with transitivity, uh, we, we have a path from uh, A to C. So, how do we find this one? Uh, there is uh, uh, this algorithm basically solves this in dynamic programming. Let's see how does it solve. <coughs> so, uh, the, uh, this particular algorithm uh, starts with a matrix called R0. And then with a series of transformations, it, it reaches Rn. So in this one, uh, to be more specific, R0 is the adjacent matrix we are we have, and then Rn is the uh, transitive closure we are interested in, and with a uh, lot of intermediate uh, stages here, the very intermediate matrix. Here. In general, Rk represents uh, a matrix where uh, at i comma j in in uh, in, in Rk. There is a one if and only if there is a path from uh, i to j, which can have uh, the first uh, k first uh, first k vertices as intermediate vertices. So the, the definition is consistent with uh, the first and the last matrices. So R zero means there is a path from i to j uh, with no other intermediate vertices. That means obviously uh, it, it, it's all just edges. Right, that is uh, that is the adjacent matrix. And in R1, it uh, the R1 matrix in the R1 matrix there is a one at i comma j, if and only if there is a path from i to j, which can have vertex number one as an intermediate vertex. So similarly, Rn can have all the vertices as intermediate vertices. So that that is basically uh, uh, giving us the reachability uh, matrix, <coughs> a transitive closure uh, of the one graph. So how do we obtain Rk? Uh, we can obtain Rk from Rk minus one. That's all. We don't need any other matrices uh, pre previous to that. Uh, so an element in Rk uh, is if there is already a one in in uh, Rk minus one. That means we can reach from i to j with using only k minus one vertices as intermediate vertices. Uh, so that will satisfy prior uh, uh, in Rk also. Uh, if there is no path from i to j in rk minus 1 matrix, but if there is a path from i to k and a path from k to j according to transitivity, there is a path from i to j with k as an intermediate vertex. So that is what we are interested in. Right? So that's why r of j i, j, I, I j will become uh, 1 in uh, this condition that is there. So that idea is uh, depicted here. Suppose there is no path from i to j in R of R k minus one. That means it's uh, only vertex one to vertex k minus one uh, as intermediate vertices. We cannot, we don't have a path from i to j. But if there is a path from uh, i to k here, i to k, and then here from k to j. So with transitivity, now we have a path from i to j in R k because now k can be used as an intermediate vertex. So that's how we do that. So, if there are ones in uh, any number of ones in R k minus one, will be uh, carried forward in R k also. But uh, zeros we can transform into one if there is if uh, k can be an intermediate vertex. So we can just look for uh, k throne and k column. If there are ones here and the uh, 
intersection point here which is uh, which will which can become one uh, essentially using the right? let's uh, let's see an example how does it work <coughs> uh, here is that diagram we have seen earlier and uh, this is the adjustment we, we uh, conveniently call it as r0 uh, so now how do we get r1 from r0 now we have an option of in, in r1 we have an option of using uh, a as an ethernet vertex so all the ones will can be carried out of uh, carried forward uh, here blindly and now uh, when i look at this one there is one one ir and one here that means uh, there is a path from uh, d to a and a path from a to b so with a as an intermediate vertex now i can have a path from d to b so that's why this will become one so with a as an intermediate vertex i can reach from d to b via a right so that's why this became one now from r1 to r2 now i have an option of uh, b as an intermediate vertex in, in all the paths so with that if you look at this row and column here so, so this point can become one which is essentially uh, there is a path from uh, <coughs> there is a path from uh, a to b and then there is a path from b to d so there has to be a path from a to d via b so this will become one so a to d was uh, there was no path earlier but now uh, via b i can have a path from a to d so that's why this became one similarly your one and one here will result in one i will make this one as one so which, which is essentially uh, d to b there is a path and b to d there is a path so d to d is to be a path so uh, d to b uh, there was a path here via a already and in this one and uh, uh, and then b to and then b to b uh, b to d is there is already a path so now there is a cycle from b to d so this will become one with this cycle we are not considering any self loops so this is a cycle now from r2 to r3 it doesn't change anything because it's very obvious uh, this whole uh, uh, this whole row column we don't have any intersections of ones and ones here so which is evident in this graph also because there are no uh, edges going out of uh, c that's why c cannot be an intermediate vertex for any path right uh, so from 3 to 4 that means no uh, vertex 4 can become an intermediate vertex here so with that lot of zeros can turn into one uh, so here a to a we can have a cycle here and then a to c we can have more path so a to c was not there was no path here now a to c i can reach via d a to d and then b to c uh, there is one here so that way all of these uh, zeros are turned into one now this is the transitive uh, closure we are interested in now observe here the uh, the row with c uh, with c as the vertex uh, is all zero that, that, that's because we cannot reach anywhere from c Otherwise, we can reach C from other nodes. So that, but from C, we cannot reach it. Right. Let's see the algorithm. Uh, how does it look? So, algorithm is, is looks very elegant, very simple. Uh, uh, so, we start with uh, the input as an adjunct matrix, and we are interested in uh, the transitive closure. So, we uh, we start with adjunct matrix as R zero, and then with n iterations with uh, an image iteration of k so we are going to uh, uh, transform r k minus 1 to r k and then eventually when r n is, is, is defined r n is the one we are interested in as an item right and these two inner loops uh, uh, try to process each each uh, element or each cell in the matrix i comma j so an i comma j in, in r k can be obtained from, from uh, r k minus 1 so if R K minus one already has one in I comma J, it will be directly taken. If it is, this is not one, and if this case is true, that means uh, there is a one from I to K uh, at I comma K, and then there is a one at K comma J. Then there will be a one at I comma J in R K flat. Alright, so the, this algorithm works. Uh, it looks like it is inefficient because we are trying to use a n plus one matrices, uh, but in practice we don't need them. Uh, we can take adjunct matrix and then we can transform the, the same matrix into a uh, transitive closure uh, in place. In place means we don't have to copy to any other other matrix. So all of these will be, if it is just A, it's going to be uh, A of uh, A of I comma J would be A of I comma J or uh, A of I comma K and A of uh, K 
come out with right so the same matrix can be uh, transformed in place and then we are going to get a in the end which is uh, which is what we are interested in. and uh, because of uh, these uh, three loops uh, it's very easy to see uh, the prime efficiency of this algorithm is uh, theta of uh, n cube so now let's see another algorithm uh, floyd's algorithm uh, this is a uh, very similar to the washes algorithm we see and uh, this tries to solve a problem where uh, it is try to uh, it defines all pairs uh, shorter path uh, that what does that mean is in a digraph of uh, a weighted digraph where this is the weight matrix of this digraph uh, so it, it basically uh, has the weights in in, 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 those, in those edges and it, it uh, this algorithm finds shortest path between every pair of uh, vertices here typically we are uh, we are interested in finding a shortest path from a, a vertex i to vertex j in a given graph for many practical applications but this algorithm finds shortest path from uh, every vertex to every other vertex so obviously there are about uh, there are uh, in the order of n square vertices so it finds all those order of n squared shortest paths uh, in, in one shot right it looks like a lot of hard work but yeah, it, it does it in in, in in an amazing speed let's see how does it work the idea is very similar to uh, the washes algorithm so we start with uh, say d0 and then we go with the series of transformations of those matrices d and then we get a dn d0 is my uh, is the weight matrix we have and then dn is the final distance matrix we are interested in and uh, a dk in general uh, uh, has one uh, 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 in dk uh, at i comma j we have the shortest distance from i to j with uh, the first k vertices as intermediate vertices possibly the first k vertices as intermediate vertices right. uh, so <coughs> so that is very consistent with d0 which uh, which doesn't have any other vertices as the intermediate vertices in the shortest path and dn can have every other vertex vertex as uh, intermediate vertices in the shortest path right now uh, so obtaining a d uh, d of i comma uh, i comma j in case matrix is very similar to our, our versus algorithm we can we can look at here so uh, initially uh, because it's we started with uh, the, the matrix uh, the weight matrix like this we already have some numbers here we while transforming we we make it better so that the sense these numbers will, will can only be uh, improved uh, in terms of uh, reducing it rather than increasing it so every time we look for the minimum value here so in the, uh, we t if the uh, if the distance from uh, i to k i to k the iteration if the distance from i to k and then k to j if we add them up that will be the, uh, the the distance from i to j via k so if that is uh, shorter than the one we already have from i to j then we are going to upgrade it okay. so obviously the loops are very similar we have the weight matrix here and uh, that is we are calling it as d so principally this is d or d0 and uh, we are going to get uh, d1 to dn admittedly over time and final matrix here so here we are already dropping that index because we are transforming the matrix in place and i comma j every time we are uh, we obtain um, uh, we, we calculate for every cell in the matrix in uh, for for each iteration of this right so let's see an example of this so we have this uh, weight mat uh, the, the digraph here, uh, weighted digraph, and then the weight matrix here. Right. So in the weight matrix, uh, the self loops we are uh, we are considering uh, we are considering the distance from uh, i to i as zero here, uh, and uh, there is if there is an, a non-infinity number, that means uh, there is an edge of this uh, this weight, and infinity is uh, indicates there is no edge. Uh, so that is conveniently helping us because the dis distance when we say infinity it means there is no path uh, from i to j so this is d0 principally and then how do we get uh, d1 with uh, a as the vertex can the distances from i to j improve uh, if we consider a as an intermediate vertex so that's how we are going to look at it so now look at this one from b to c there was no path now with a as an intermediate vertex with a as an intermediate vertex we can go from uh, b to c via a which is 2 plus 3 so 
So this two plus three. In this one, look at the cross uh, intersection of these two points and then add these two numbers. If the sum of these two numbers is smaller than this number, upgrade it. So that's all we are going to do in the, in the algorithm. So that's why this infinity is upgraded to five here because uh, via a, uh, the vertex a, we can have a shorter path. Similarly, this one also, uh, d to c. d to c, there was no path here, but via a, I can get an improved version, which is this plus three is so these two change from d1 to d2 there is only one change from c to a from c to a we didn't have any path here that's why it was infinity now via b i can uh, have a better path which is 7 plus 2 right that's why uh, this infinity is changed to 7 7 plus 2 because c to b is 7 and b to a is 2 that's why the path from c to a would be 7 plus 2 which is 9 here and then from uh, 2 to uh, d2 to d3, via c we have a lot of further improvements. So these four will change from infinity to some finite number. And finally from d3 to d4, using d as an intermediate vertex, we have one improvement. Observe here, this is again c to a, which we already said. Earlier uh, it was infinity because we didn't have an edge, right, to start with. And uh, with b as an intermediate vertex, we got upgraded to 9 because with b, it became 7 plus 2. Okay. Now with d as an intermediate vertex, I can we can get a much better improvement. So 9 is compared with uh, c to d plus d to a, which is 6 plus 1 or 1 plus 6. C to d is 1 and d to a is 6. So 1 plus 6 is 7. That is uh, lesser than 9, so we are going to upgrade it. So my shortest path from C to A is now 7. Right. So uh, now what we have this matrix is the distance matrix uh, which has uh, shortest distances from I to J for every pair. Right. So right. Uh, if you have any doubts uh, please uh, comment, uh, comment below. Thanks for watching.